When you've got quantitative data, make sure you put your data into tables. Give each table a number, such as table 1.1, and an informative title. This is really useful because you can also graph your data. Bar graphs are used to represent discrete data. There should be gaps between the bars, rather like this one. You could use histograms. These look like bar graphs without the gaps and are for continuous data, so their numbers are on the x-axis. Line graphs can also be used for continuous data and are often preferred for comparing two sets of data. Next, a scattergram or scatter graph. Now, these are used to see if there's any correlation between two variables. If the data is quantitative, you can analyse them using statistics. The simplest type of statistics is descriptive statistics. As the name suggests, these describe patterns found in a data set. They use the term central tendency, which just means the average, mean or mode. They also show how spread out the data is. This is called the dispersion. To find the free measures of central tendency, you need to do the following. First, the mean. Add all the values and divide by the number in the sample. So, for example, the mean of 3, 4, 6, 7, 9, 10 and 12 is 51 divided by 7, which is 7.29. Secondly, the median. The number in the middle of a data set when the data are put in numerical order. So the median of these numbers, 3, 4, 6, 7, 9, 10 and 12, is 7. Lastly, the mode. Now, this is the category that occurs most often in a data set. So here, the mode of 3, 4, 6, 4, 8, 9 and 4 is 4 but sometimes averages can be misleading. If we add up the numbers of children in a large number of families and find the average, we may end up with a number like 2.4. Now, obviously no one has 0.4 of a child. That would be mental.